Yeah, I think the point about um, scrapping sex, like I mentioned earlier, is fundamentally flawed on different fronts. Um, first, I'd like to note that yes, the call, you know, for the scrapping of sex is based on the status quo. It's based on the historical antecedents of um, where they are not only disempowered, but they are incapable of conducting um, high quality elections at the local government level. And those reasons are not perfect. The fact that governors have hijacked, you know, the entire structure for conducting local government elections as a way of exercising um, you know, overbearing powers on those in if, if, if you look at, um, you know, why we are where we are, we are where we are because the structural, the structural um, mechanisms in place and depend state independent electoral commissions is not guaranteed in the constitution and this is why it is important that whilst we think about scrapping of sex the question we should ask ourselves is have we protected and shielded the sex from capture just like we have done for INEC? the answer is no and so what we need to do you know is to look at one why is it that state governors do not conduct elections after um how are the state independent electoral commissions don't conduct elections you know after the term of office of state of local government chairman um elapses it is because there is no clarity there's ambiguity on the question relating to the tenure of the local government um local government councils so we need to deal with that the second point is that you scrap sex you transfer the powers to INEC. INEC is suffocating with a lot of responsibilities. INEC have said, please take away this responsibility of electoral offenses prosecution because it comes with the commission with a lot of burden. This same INEC that is screaming that its responsibilities are too enormous is the same INEC we want to saddle with the responsibility of conducting local council elections. And so I think it is quite um, unfortunate that we're making that call at this moment because we want to just suffocate the Electoral Commission if we transfer that responsibility to INEC. The third critical point, which is very important, is this discussion around local government autonomy. I think that is ironical that on one hand, there is a clamor for local government autonomy. On the other hand, there's also a clamor for centralization. Because what you're simply saying is you want the federal government to be involved in the administration of local council elections. It defeats the entire argument of decentralization of power. And we will strip people of the opportunity, you know, to contribute to local governance at the local government level. So I think that the proposal shouldn't be scrapping sex. The proposal should be how do we guarantee the independence of state independent electoral commissions and also limit the exercise of power that the governors do at the state level by you know circumventing the constitutional provisions as limited as they are by ensuring that state independent electoral commissions are liberated you know, from the influence of the governors. That should be the conversation. That is what will strengthen our electoral democracy at the local level. For those who are for the scrapping of uh, the state independent electoral commissions would argue with you that um, having INEC handle elections does not affect the local government autonomy in any way. In fact, it will strengthen it because that way you're having one electoral body in the country running the affairs of elections. In, at whatever level, you know, and ensuring, you know, uh, that uh, these elections are as credible as possible. Instead of having 36 state indep indep uh, um, independent, uh, electoral, independent electoral, commission. electoral commissions, that, you know, you may not be too sure. Even when one or two states get it right, other states may give you problems. So what's your take? And then you're talking about suffocating INEC. If more responsibility is handed over to INEC now to handle state uh, local government elections, of course, there will be plans to strengthen INEC. So 
Could you respond to this? Well, so let me start with the last point. And when we say there will be plans to strengthen INEC, there will be plans to strengthen INEC how? Now, even the Electoral Commission, INEC as presently constituted, still has some trappings of lack of independence. So when you look at the appointment of INEC um, and the commission, and um, we've always advocated in line with Justice Ways Committee's recommendation, that one way to secure the independence of the INEC is to divest the power of appointing the INEC chairman and the national commissioners from the president. We are all witnesses that to the fact that last year, there were individuals with clear partisan leanings, individuals that campaigned for political parties who were appointed and confirmed by the Senate, who are currently in INEC. And that undermines the independence and the neutrality of the Electoral Commission. INEC has its own challenges. And so let's not neglect the fact that even though INEC has some measure of independence, but some of the elections INEC has conducted also fails the integrity test. And you look at recent off-cycle elections in Kogi, Bielsa, and even um, Imo, you see how consistently the quality of elections have actually diminished. And INEC is still grappling with just managing the logistics, you know, of those elections, coupled with, you know, other responsibilities of electoral offenses prosecution, of part political party registration and regulation, boundary del delimitation. These responsibilities are too enormous for one institution, you know, to undertake. And this is why you have a lot of administrative and procedural shortcomings. Strongly view that INEC needs to be of, on needs needs to be onboarded of some of the responsibilities that it has, and it's in line with the wisdom clearly articulated and expressed in Justice Ways Committee's um, report. The, the other point about whether if INEC or one electoral body conducts elections at the local level, it doesn't in any way undermine you know local government. The fundamental question is centralization. The whole concept of centralization, when you centralize, you no longer distribute and devolve power for local communities you know, to engage and participate in elections. And what do I mean? As it presently constituted, state independent electoral commissions, yeah, the governors appoint um, appoint the, the the chair, the secretary, and the commissioners. They also appoint, you know, um, the officers who manage elections at the, at the local government um, level. Those people who manage those elections are people who come from those states. So you give the people the opportunity, you know, to manage the elections. They are part of the decision making about how elections are governed. In INEC, it is not the same because it's a federal institution. You can take individuals from Borno and deploy them, you know, to Rivas as electoral um, as electoral officers. Whilst there is a, there's an advantage of doing that at the federal elections, it's, it's different, you know, from a state election. And so you give people the opportunity to participate because the whole concept of devolution of powers is to enable people exercise what you call local autonomy about their decisions. Now, the mode of making those decisions is, is critical because it has to meet certain tests. And it's a test of transparency, it's a test of accountability. And this is at the heart of the discussion, is that in the management of state independent electoral commissions and local government elections, have state independent electoral commissions been transparent and independent? The answer is no. And the reason why is because there are some constitutional gaps that needs to be fixed. So my argument is why not fix those gaps and see if the states do not exercise the kind of independence? And let's not forget, history you know, tells us that the same challenges that state independent electoral commissions face were the same challenges INEC was facing 10, 15 years ago until the reforms were undertaken and attention was placed on INEC. If we place the same attention and focus and the things we make on INEC at the state level and the subnational level, I bet 
next five to ten years, there will be radical reforms at the state because we've created the state the states the way they choose without recourse to the constitution is what us to where we 